Nathan Patrick's here, and today I'm excited to demo the Boundary, the new envelope generator and four quadrant VCA module from Schlappy Engineering. I have it sitting here next to the mask because I kind of wanted to compare and contrast the two modules. At first blush, the Boundary is a two-stage envelope generator that has a attack, decay, rise, or fall. Um, and then the four quadrant VCA we'll go into later. Um, you might be asking what, what makes that difference from something like Maths or the Rampage, and it's actually a lot because we have really cool features like um, Rectify, which is um, something I always point people to when they buy Maths is the Maths cookbook. It has a lot of these uh, functions that you could just kind of patch, uh, self-patch actually. Um, but to have it right there in a small form factor, that convenience is really great. And to have a built-in VCA is just amazing. Um, so I'll just show off that built-in VCA. It's really great. It's very simple, but in a way it's, um, it's always the pairing envelope into VCA. So you'll see modules from like Dope that do this as well as like the Javelin, but I like attack decay envelopes and I like them to actually be like the surge style, super snappy, uh, kind of analog envelope. So I'll just take a pulse wave from my BIOSC. I'll run it into the in, turn the bias down so it doesn't drone. And this knob, you can see up here, it says slew. That means that this output is actually normalized to this CV input. So when we strike the trig, we should actually start getting our gated notes that are gated and controlled by our envelope generator. So we're running that out to my external mixer, and then I take my gate and trigger. So when I hit play and I turn this up, we actually hear a sequence. It's super simple, but it's kind of a revelation to me because again, having to patch my VCA into my envelope into my VCA and they may be far apart, just give me one module and I'll be happy and the boundary gives me that. So I'm happy. Um, another cool trick with the boundary is that the actual envelope generation itself is really cool. You have independent controls over the shapes. So with something like maths, when you loop it, you have logarithmic or exponential, but they both apply to both the rise and the fall. Um, again, looking at that maths cookbook, there's actually pa patches that you could do that change the the uh, response curves, but that's not without patching and it's not the most obvious thing to do. So this one won't have any audio. I just want to show you what this looks like. Um, we'll take our output of our envelope generator, run it into my Mordex data so we can see it, start cycling it. And when we make, I'm going to make it fast enough where we can actually see the wave. Let's change the time a little bit here so we get more of a range. Okay, cool. There we go. And so when we see our wave, these um, knobs here, we actually are able to apply that the shape only to the attack with this one knob, which is great. So we could actually only have that sort of uh, response change on one part of the stage. Again, this applies to both on math, so to have both is great. And then if we want the uh, decay to be, you know, I already have the setup. This, the top is logarithmic, so you can see that it has the curve that goes for much longer for kind of, kind of slow onsets. With the exponential, I like for the uh, the Ks to make them really snappy. So we actually have that here. And as I kind of dial this in, pardon my my uh, oscilloscope jumping around a lot. I haven't tuned it very well. Um, but you can see now that we actually have the exponential on the on the on the uh, offset when it actually decays. So you can have two different settings there, and those are both uh, CV controlled as well. So. CV control shape generation is something that I'm really, really into, and I'm glad that that's included and that you can do it different on both sides. The next thing to look at is this bound input. The thing's called the boundary, so you gotta know that it's important. Um, when I first looked at this, I was confused because I think I thought I was looking at something that was a VCA, which it kind of does that. Like on first blush, you'll see that if I, I'm gonna take my output two of my maths and just as a static voltage, and it's gonna be fully open. So when I patch this in here, nothing will happen. Um, change in frequency a little bit. But as I turn this down, you can see that my amplitude actually changes and until it goes to zero. So you might think that that's just a VCA, it's just scaling amplitude, but it's actually the threshold. It sets the threshold at which the uh, 
once it hits that threshold, the attack goes there and then it goes to the decay. So as you change the threshold, the lengths of the stages change. And you could see that as I have it set right there, the frequency slows down so you know that you know it's at a certain rate that is being scanned here. And then I slow it down, you can see it actually speeds up. You could see the frequency actually change. So it's a change in amplitude and frequency. And this is the bouncing ball effect. Um, we can really hear it clearly if I take my, um, I'm going to take this signal, I'm going to run it into the FM input of my BIOSC, and I'm going to monitor it. So I'm going to turn it down, and we're going to hear it. As I slow it down, let's see. It's going kind of fast, so I want to get it not going so fast. Okay, so you can really hear it there, right? It's doing the whole sweep, but as I decrease it, it gets faster and faster. And that sounds like a bouncing ball. And the bouncing ball is kind of like a classic patch um, that you could do with maths again, where one envelope is changing the frequency of the other one. And then, um, and then yeah, you would actually need a VCA to actually scale the, um, particular amplitude down, which using a VCA you can, this kind of has the benefit of both. So, you know, we have this and I was just using two to automate it, but you know, the classic effect it would be to use some another looping envelope generator to uh, play around with that. So when I turn this back up, you can hear it. So that's a bouncing ball effect. And that's, a, again, envelopes are really fun to play with, especially with control voltage, where it doesn't have to just be one where you strike it and then you're done. Um, one other cool thing here is I'm going to show you how to do a sub oscillator, uh, how to generate a sub oscillator here. You take the end of rise out and I'm gonna take, we're gonna listen to one, just what the, os, uh, the BOSC, the BOSC is set at. So this is what our initial tone is. And then if you take, I'm just going to take another waveform off of that and run it into the trigger input, turn off cycling. Now we actually are triggering this so fast and the end of rise will allow us to do some wave shaping on a square wave. Um, and we'll just listen to it, right? So it's the same frequency as our sine wave, but as we play with the attack, you can hear it does a little bit of uh, pulse width modulation, but once it gets past a certain point, it actually goes down an octave. There it is. So now we actually have something that is a sub oscillator generator using an envelope generator. And on this other end, the decay also does some uh, pulse width modulation sounds. Another thing that you can like control using control voltage. So I'll slow this down plug this in and since the uh, the stage of the decay is CV controlled uh, I could go into fall here and the amount I could control using this knob so and just to show that it tracks yeah so that's pretty cool and then we can even do crazier things like since this is a ring mod, we can take that end of rise, actually add it to our, um, um, we don't even have to do that, it's actually self-patched. Um, we can take that sine wave and ring mod it against that sub oscillator that we generated to create yet a new shape. So, you know, having that four quadrant LFO or four quadrant VCA there gives us a lot of abilities to create new wave shapes using oscillators, envelope generators, any signals. So let's hear how that sounds. And then, you know, we actually have another CV input that we can play around with. So I'm gonna get Mads going at audio rate and we'll patch in the CV2 to create even more interesting campers. What would be interesting is that, you know, this is actually only positive. So if I take a negative signal off of a four, we'll actually really engage that ring mod and invert that signal.
And then the last thing I want to show you very quickly is some side chaining. So one of the cool things with this module and with side chaining in general, we usually think of that using a compressor, right? But you don't need a compressor. Usually what I do is I'll set a VCA's bias all the way up. So let's just do that. I'll take my pulse wave, run it in here, turn my bias all the way up, turn my CV all the way down, and you're just gonna hear it drone. So, you know, after you have like a, you know, all your drums mixed together, a sample, but this is just gonna be a raw oscillator. But essentially, it's just gonna drone and then we're gonna just duck the volume. And we could do that either with envelopes or we're gonna use the rectify input to uh, do some envelope following. So, I patch that in, I plug this in. You'll just hear that, you know, side chaining. It's just going to be the act of ducking the uh, amplitude. Um, the cool thing here is that this four quadrant VCA that's uh, normal to the CV has uh, the ability to invert. So, you know, if I set it to down, what it's going to do is subtract from that maximum input. So, uh, without using an audio source, here's how you would side chain. I take the gate out here all these steps will duck the amplitude and we'll hear that side chaining. So I run into my trig, I hit play, and I turn this up and you'll hear. So you could hear that side chaining where it's just like the pumping sound. It, the attack is strong, so the amplitude drops down and then it breathes. It gives us that side chaining sound, but you know, Sometimes you already have your kick there and you don't want to use a sequencer. So how do you do that? Well, you burst I have a uh, kick sample loaded in there. So I'll trigger that here instead. Got this kind of weird molt situation going on here. So we could hear our kick and then we could hear the side chaining. So let's just hear that kick. Cool. So we got that kick. We have the signal molted. So I'll take that audio signal, go through to rectify. You can envelope follow without rectifying, but rectifying, what that will do is it's gonna take that wave and when it crosses zero, it just bumps it back up. So the kind of uh, like envelope follower, like the detection of the, the general shape is just gonna be a lot cleaner. Um, so I go through the rectify and then again, that's almost like we're doing trig, except now we are just directly interjecting a uh, audio signal. Um, so you can see that that's actually pumping here. I'm gonna dial the bias down because the audio signal is not gonna be as strong as that eight volt um, signal uh, envelope that's being generated. And so now when we hear our... So now you can hear the ducking on that droning oscillator and here's the kick. And if we wanna make it more pronounced, just duck down the uh, bias. And then play with the shapes to for taste. You know, if we wanna bit of an onset so it isn't as intense, play with the attack. If we want that to be really fast, when my decay's all the way down, you can barely tell the ducking's there, but if I turn the decay up, the effect of that kick is really pronounced, so definitely a fun thing to do to play around with sort of some side chain ducking using a VCA and the boundary specifically, so I covered a lot of things there but that's because the boundary has a lot of cool features in such a small package. Um, and it's, you know, very much something that I think is useful. I really like these utilities that combine um, ideas there, a VCA, an envelope generator, but what if we made the VCA a ring mod? What if we added rectification? And that boundary thing is really cool for bouncing ball things. So I'm excited to see what everybody comes up with when they are playing around with boundaries uh, in their system and just generally uh, whatever ideas come from using envelope generators creatively, you should let us know either here on uh, YouTube or give us a call, visit the store. We're always here to talk. So like always, happy patching.